Hi, it's Donna again, and I'm going to tell you a story today that is one of my absolute favorite stories. It comes from Romania, which is where my family is from. I think that may be why I like it so much. And it's about a woman named Alexandra. Alexandra lived with her husband, Igor, at the edge of a very dark wood. They had a fine house on the side of the hill. They had a field full of turnips. They had a cow that gave them two full pails of milk every single day. They had fruit trees that gave them lots and lots of fruit. And they had hives that gave them sweet honey. But the thing they didn't have was a child. Well, one day, Igor and Alexandra were out in the turnip field and they were pulling up turnips. And Alexandra pulled up a turnip and she said to Igor, do you know what I would love? I would love a child to share this turnip with. And she threw the turnip into the cart. Igor looked at her and said, one child? That's all you want is one child? And he pulled up two turnips and he said, I would like two children to share these two turnips with. And Alexandra said, two children? Is that all you want is two children? I would like a dozen children, 12 children to share 12 turnips with. And she pulled up a dozen turnips and she threw them into the cart. And Igor said, a dozen children? You just want a dozen children? I want dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of children. And he pulled up dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of turnips. And he threw them into the cart and they both laughed. And when the cart was full, Igor and Alexandra pulled the turnip cart up the hill to their house. Well, when they were just about at their house, Igor said, oh no. Alexandra looked. There were children everywhere. There were children in the trees. There were children looking out the windows. There were children looking out the doors. There were children running down the hill toward them. How many children do we have? Alexandra asked. Igor was just finishing up the counting. He said, Alexandra, we have 97, 98, 99, 100 children. 100 children, said Alexandra. That is not one child too many. And Alexandra and Igor made room in their house for their 100 children. But you know what? 100 children eat a lot of food. And pretty soon, the 100 children had eaten all of the turnips in the turnip field. And they had had so much milk that the cow had run dry. You know what, Alexandra said? Our 100 children are soon gonna eat all the fruit and all the honey too. I had better go out and find more food. So Alexandra, kissed Igor and each of the 100 children and she left the house to go and find some food. Well, she walked through the dark wood for a long, long time until she came to the other side. And by then it was almost midnight. And she saw a shepherd up on a hill and he was tending a flock full of sheep ram, lamb, cows, and Alexandra thought, I wish I had some of those animals to feed my children. 
But just as she was thinking that, suddenly she saw a great big green light and heard a sound that was like the wind. And all of a sudden, she couldn't believe her eyes. A baby dragon came running up the road. He grabbed a ram, a lamb, a sheep, and three fine cows from the shepherd and ran back down the road. Come back, screamed the shepherd. But the baby dragon was gone. Wow, said Alexandra. That was really something. I know, said the shepherd. Every single night at midnight, the baby dragon runs down the road. He grabs a ram, a lamb, a sheep, and three fine cows and runs back. Pretty soon, I'm not going to have anything left, said the shepherd. I don't know what to do. Alexandra thought for a moment, and she said, hmm, what would you give me? if I got rid of that baby dragon for you. Well, said the shepherd, if you could get rid of that baby dragon, I would give you one of every three rams, one of every three lambs, one of every three sheep, and three fine cows every single year for as long as you lived. That was a pretty good deal. I'll do it, said Alexandra, but, and she looked around. First, I'll need one of those big, fine, round cheeses that you have over there that you made from your cow's milk. And also one of the small, round cheeses. And a pocket knife if you have one. Done, said the shepherd. So the next night at midnight, Alexandra stood in the road with the great big round cheese on the ground and the little round cheese beside it and the pocket knife in her pocket. And all of a sudden, she saw a great big green light and she heard a sound that sounded just like the wind. And she held up her hand and she said, stop and the baby dragon stopped right in front of her. Who are you, said the baby dragon. Alexander bent down and she picked up the great big round cheese and she took a giant bite and she chewed the cheese up. I am Alexandra the rock eater. I eat rocks. And she put down the big cheese and she picked up the little round cheese and she said, and from little stones like this, I squeeze them so hard that buttermilk comes out. And if you bother that shepherd one more time, I'm going to squeeze you until you're as small as a lizard. Well, the baby dragon was frightened. In the middle of the night at the edge of a dark wood, a big cheese can look like a rock and a little cheese can look like a stone. Oh my, said the baby dragon. You are really strong. Would you come home with me and be my friend? I don't have Time to come home with baby dragons and be their friends, said Alexandra. I have 100 hungry children to feed. Well, the baby dragon was sad. And then all of a sudden he smiled and he said, Well, if you come home with me for three days and meet my mother and spend three days with me, I will give you three bags full of gold. For three bags full of gold, said Alexandra. I'll come home with you and meet your mother and spend three days. So the baby dragon and Alexandra walked down the road and they went to the dragon cave. 
the baby dragon brought Alexandra in. And when his mother saw Alexandra, she went, what is that? This is my friend, Alexandra the Rock Eater. She can eat rocks and she's going to spend three days here for three bags of gold. You bring home the strangest creatures, said the baby dragon's mother, but she's so puny and tiny she can't do us any harm. She can stay three days. The baby dragon was really pleased. He showed Alexandra where she could sleep. And in the morning, the baby dragon woke Alexandra up and said, Alexandra, come on, let's go out and play. Let's play throw the club. And the baby dragon took a club off the wall that was so big. Alexandra had never seen a club that big. Come on, we're gonna go outside and throw it, said the baby dragon. I can't throw that club, thought Alexandra. But they went outside and the baby dragon picked up the club and he swung it around and around and around his head and then he tossed it up in the air. And it went three miles away. Come on, Alexandra. Let's go find the club. Then it'll be your turn to throw it back. I can't throw that club, thought Alexandra. And if these dragons find out how weak I am, they're gonna eat me. Well, they walked and they walked and they walked and they didn't find the club until it was night. And the baby dragon said, okay, Alexandra, your turn. Pick up the club and throw it back. Alexandra just stood there and thought, even if I had Igor and my 100 children helping me, I couldn't pick that club up. But the baby dragon said, come on, Alexandra, what are you waiting for? And Alexandra looked all around and she said, hmm, well, do you see that moon up in the sky? If I throw this club now, It'll knock that moon right out of the sky. I'm gonna wait a while until the moon moves. What? What? said the baby dragon. You could knock that moon out of the sky? <sighs> of course, said Alexandra. That's why I have to wait. You can't knock that moon out of the sky, said the baby dragon. We hunt at night by the light of the moon. If you knock it out of the sky, how are we gonna hunt? Oh, please, please don't throw the club up to the moon, Alexandra. No, I'm gonna do it, said Alexandra. I, I probably won't hit the moon, but maybe I will. No, no, said the baby dragon. Let me throw the club back, please, please. I don't think so, said Alexandra. Oh, please, said the baby dragon. I'll give you seven more bags of gold if you let me throw it back and you don't knock the moon out of the sky. Well, for seven more bags of gold, okay, you throw the club back. So the baby dragon picked up the club and he circled around and around and around and he threw it back three miles. <sighs> Alexandra got back. She was pretty tired and she went to bed. Well, the next morning, the baby dragon woke up Alexandra and said, come on, Alexandra, today we can't play. Today we have to work. My mother needs some water. And the baby dragon picked up two empty pails, the biggest biggest, biggest pails Alexandra had ever, ever, ever seen. He picked up the pails and Alexandra followed him while they went down to the river. And she watched as the baby dragon dipped the pails in the water and started to carry them back to his mother. And he said, Alexandra, I'll bring back the empty pails and then it's your turn to fill them up, okay? My mother needs a lot of water. 
What am I gonna do, thought Alexandra. I can't pick those pails up. I can't fill them with water. And then she remembered the pocket knife she had in her pocket. She got it out and she began to dig in the sand by the side of the river. And she dug, she dug, and she dug. And the baby dragon came back and he said, okay, Alexandra, it's your turn to fill the pails now. And Alexandra said, filling pails of water, that's so slow. I'm not gonna do that. What are you gonna do, said the baby dragon. Well, um, I'm digging a trench. I'm gonna dig so that all of the river just flows right into your house. And then your mother will have as much water as she wants. What? What, said the baby dragon? You're gonna have the whole river go to my house? No, you can't do that. Oh, sure I can, said Alexandra, and she just kept digging with her little pocket knife. Sure, that's so much quicker than filling pails and bringing them to your mother. No, no, said the baby dragon. We swim in this river. If you bring the whole river to my house, where are we gonna swim and cool off? No, Alexandra, please don't do that. Yeah, I think I will, said Alexandra, and she just kept digging. Oh, please, please, said the baby dragon. If you let me fill the pails with water and bring them back and forth to my mother, then I will give you seven more bags of gold. Oh, for seven more bags of gold. Okay, you fill the pails with water and bring them to your mother and I won't make the river go to your house. Oh, thank you, said the baby dragon. And all day until nighttime, he filled those pails with water and ran them home to his mother and came back and filled them up again. And Alexander just sat there looking at him. That baby dragon was awfully tired that night. Well, in the morning, the baby dragon said, come on, Alexandra, we have to go to the forest now because my mother needs wood, so we'll have to knock down some trees. I can't knock down any trees, thought Alexandra, and they're going to see how weak I am now, and they're going to eat me. But she followed right behind as the dragon went to the forest and began to knock down trees, one at a time, one at a time. And then he'd pick up a tree, and he'd bring it to his mother. And Alexandra was just standing there. What are you doing, Alexandra? Said the baby dragon. Come on, my mother needs a lot of wood. Alexandra saw a vine hanging off a tree. She walked over, she took the vine, and she started to wrap it around the trees. What are you doing now, Alexandra? Asked the baby dragon. Well, said Alexandra, I'm going to pull this vine and knock down the whole forest and bring it to your mother. It takes so much time to knock down one tree at a time and bring it to her and then come back. That's the worst idea you've had yet, said the baby dragon. If you tear down the whole forest, where am I gonna hide when my mommy is angry at me? Please, please don't knock down the whole forest, Alexandra. Oh no, it's much easier, said Alexandra. This way, your mother will have all these trees. No, no, said the baby dragon. Please don't do it, please don't do it. I will give you Seven times seven bags of gold, and I will take all the trees to my mother all day. Please, please, please. Okay, said Alexandra. And so the baby dragon knocked down one tree at a time, brought it to his mother, ran back to the forest, knocked down another tree, brought it to his mother, ran back to the forest, 
all day long. Well, when at last they got back to his cave, the baby dragon said, Mommy, I am so happy that Alexandra the Rock Eater is going home tomorrow. She was no fun at all. And she is so strong. You have no idea. She's stronger than Grandpa Dragon, who's the strongest dragon there is. And I've now promised her 66 bags of gold. What? What? You promised her 66 bags of gold? Gold is not that easy to come by, you know. And what if she goes home and brings back more of those creatures that look just like her and they steal more gold? No, we can't let that happen. We have to get rid of Alexandra, the rock eater. Tonight, when she's asleep, I want you to take your club and go to her bed and whack her on the head. And that will be the end of Alexandra the Rock Eater. Well, luckily, Alexandra was listening the whole time. She wasn't going to let the baby dragon whack her in the head. She filled a great big sack with sand and she put it in her bed and she covered it with her blanket so it looked like she was asleep there, but she crawled under the bed and she waited quietly. Well, when the baby dragon thought that Alexandra the rock eater was asleep, he tiptoed, tiptoed, tiptoed into the room and he picked up his club and he raised it up in the air and whap! He whacked it right down on the bed. And from underneath the bed safely, Alexandra let out a great big groan. And the baby dragon thought, that's the end of Alexandra the rock eater. And he yelled, because he was mighty tired. And he went to sleep. Well, in the morning, the baby dragon and his mother were congratulating each other on how clever they had been to get rid of Alexandra, the rock eater. When suddenly, good morning, they heard. And there was Alexandra. Good morning, said the mother dragon. How did you sleep last night? Oh, I slept fine, said Alexandra. But a little mosquito came at some point and bit me. A mosquito? I think it was a mosquito, said Alexandra, just like a little bite. Alexandra the rock eater, you are really strong, said the mother dragon. It's time for you to leave. I'm going to put your gold together. 66 bags. And the mother dragon jumped up and she filled all these bags with gold. And Alexandra the rock eater just stood there. Go home, Alexandra the rock eater, said the baby dragon. It's time for you to go home. What are you waiting for? Well, Alexandra knew that she couldn't pick up even one bag of gold. It was bigger than she was, and there were 66. And so she said, hmm, well, I was thinking maybe I would stay for another three days. No, no, said the baby dragon. You can't stay for another three days. No, said the baby dragon's mother. I'll give you seven times more bags of gold. Seven times, seven times, seven more bags of gold if you'll leave now. Seven times seven will be enough, said Alexandra. That'll be enough gold. So the baby dragon's mother filled up all these bags with gold. And they said, Alexandra, 
It's a golden go. Hmm. Well. All right, said Alexandra, but I don't want the baby dragon to carry my gold so that when my husband Igor sees me, he doesn't think that I'm too weak and I had to carry one bag at a time or something like that, but that I convinced a baby dragon to carry it for me. Well, the baby dragon was so tired, he could barely stand up, but he said, okay, okay, I'll, I'll carry the gold. And he piled all the gold up on his back. And Alexandra and the baby dragon walked down the road for a really long time until they came close to where Alexandra's house was. And all 100 children were sitting down to eat the very last bit of fruit from the fruit trees. When the 100 children and Igor looked up, and they saw Alexandra with a baby dragon. <gasps> a baby dragon, screamed all the children. And they began to run down the hill screaming, baby dragon for lunch. Well, the baby dragon looked at 100 children running down the hill with a knife and a fork in their hands and screaming, baby dragon for lunch and he turned around dropped the gold and ran down the road goodbye baby dragon called alexandra goodbye forever and the baby dragon turned around and he said goodbye alexandra the rock eater goodbye forever and he ran down the road past the shepherd who shouted, goodbye, baby dragon. Well, Alexandra and the shepherd and the 100 children and Igor never saw a baby dragon again. But the shepherd came and gave Alexandra one of every three sheep, one of every three lamb, one of every three rams, and three fine cows. And he did that every single year that she lived. And so she and Igor and the 100 children had all that gold and all that food and they lived happily ever after. And that's the story of Alexandra the Rock Eater. Hope you liked it. I liked it a lot. Bye.